During the past few weeks, we've had quite a few conversations about school safety. And I come to you today with a group of colleagues, adults, who work and lead in Fort Bend ISD, our teachers and some counselors. You know, Fort Bend ISD exists to inspire and equip all students to pursue futures beyond what they can imagine. And of the nearly 11,000 employees we have in our district, the vast majority of them work at a campus serving the needs of our students every single day. And I know even as our students care so deeply about safety and security, our staff cares too, because they're right there with them every day working side by side to help them succeed. And we want to make sure that our staff voices are heard as part, it's an important part of this conversation. So today I've got a few questions for the folks who have joined me and we're going to jump right into them. First of all, I want to ask you all, as adults, how important is your role in keeping your campus safe? Well, we set the stage, you know, however we act, we're going to be up at the front of the classroom or, or on, for me on the football field and so however we're carrying ourselves, the, our students or athletes are going to reflect that and so if we carry ourselves with confidence or we carry ourselves in a way that cares about the kids where they know that, then they're going to act in a way that reflects that truth. I agree. I think it's really important that my students know that no matter what, yes, we're there to teach, we're there to educate, we're there to help you, but we're there to support you. And we want to make sure that you feel that support at all times. So building that relationship with kids and helping them understand that that's what we're here for, not just to teach them, but also just to know that we're there for them. I think that's really important. So what does that support look like on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, uh, speaking from a counselor's perspective, sometimes students feel that all counselors do is do scheduling. And, and they, are, they have a lot of paperwork and that the counselors are busy. And uh, that is not true. You need to come, anytime you need to talk to a counselor, just come in, sign in. If it is urgent, let the secretaries know or an adult in the counseling office know that we need to see somebody and we will find them. We'll find a counselor to sit down and talk to you right there. As a teacher, I mean, I have an open door policy, so sometimes I do feel like a counselor, but that's what I, th I think is a good thing, actually. I like having those relationships with my students and making sure that they are comfortable with me um, and the people around them in my classroom. Uh, I have this thing like, you know, my classroom is full of kids, Team Enod. So it's just like I like to make sure that they know that their peers are also someone that they can come to, not just myself, that we're all in it together. So that's what I feel it's like what support looks like. I would have to agree that the counselor's role at the particular campus is, is an extremely um, paperwork driven job, but I would have to agree with you that even though we are busy, I'm never too busy and we're never too busy enough to stop and address student concern. Um, and if there is an issue that is alarming to you or is stressful for you, a counselor is never too busy to stop what he or she is doing and to address student concern because that is our number one priority on a campus. So what do you need to feel more safe at school? Talking to me, the superintendent of Fort Bend, what do you need from me? What do you need from us as an organization to help you feel more safe at school? I think the, the drills that we do is very reinforcing because it's creating a, a muscle memory in your mind on taking the predictable routes and how to get out fast. But I think we need to practice more on unexpected situations, like everybody sitting and eating in the cafeteria and we have a lockdown situation. What do we do then? You know, practicing for unexpected um, and more of it is, I think, would be more helpful and more realistic. So I think making sure that every adult and every student in the building actually knows what's going on and what's expected of them, um, because some of these fire drills, these stu um, some of the students and even some adults, they don't really take it seriously. So making sure that we understand the expectations for everyone. And I think even just varying when you do the drills. And after the drill, having even some built-in time there to have a conversation about it. Okay, this drill was great, we did this, but we really need to work on this. You guys were too loud in the hallway. Maybe we need to make sure that, don't forget, once you leave out, everything, you, you need to be quiet so that way we can hear if there's any sort of extra instruction and just kind of varying that and again, repetition. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we gotta take the, 
you know, the same approach that we take to curriculum or, or drills, safety drills, we got to take that same perspective when we're dealing with relationships with the kids. I mean, we make a big, we have a lot of trainings about different curriculums and how to implement them. We do have trainings about how to, to do these drills, but we all talk about relationships as being a foundational part of what we need to do every day, but we very rarely address it in anything other than situations like this, like regular missions. Anything else? All right, next question. Kind of shifting gears just a little bit. What are some healthy ways or skills that you recommend to students to help them deal with stress and anxiety? Um, again, with the open door policy I have for my students, um, after school, if they need to, they can come and vent, or even before school when they're stressed out about an exam. I have multiple of my former students come in and say, hey, Enod, like, there's a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to complain about this, that, and the other. That's fine. Venting is good. Making sure that you get it off your chest is good. Um, but sometimes it's also good to go ahead and step back, take a moment, breathe, and just not think about, you know, academics and the pressures of uh, your teachers, your parents, and your, your, the pressures you have on yourself. I think it's very important for us, uh, all of us, to acknowledge and accept that certain situations are just not in your control. And also to look at your uh, stress-inducing situation and put it in the right perspective. Is it really as bad as it appears to be? Are you looking at that situation as more as glass half empty rather than glass is half full? So in order to deal with your stresses, you not only have to take care of your mind, uh, but also your body, and also you have to take some positive actions, like maintaining a positive outlook. Like a lot of times with my students, I'll sit down with them and say, okay, you're saying you don't have enough time. Okay, let's look at your planner. Let's try to plan out what it is that you need to do so that way it doesn't seem like, oh my gosh, I have three tests this week, I don't know what I'm gonna do, there's a project due. No, let's look at it and figure out, okay, if you need this block of time, okay, let's start to segment it out. Let's spend 30 minutes here, spend 20 minutes here, give yourself a break, and just kind of seeking out that help that you don't necessarily know how to do on your own. Like at the middle school level, I don't expect my students to know how to budget time. That's a school, that's tools that adults are still learning. So helping them along that path will help kind of manage some of that stress. Because again, like what she was saying, a lot of it really is put on yourself. So let me ask, kind of extend the question because this video is gonna be shown to all of our students in the district, but we also have staff members watching it. Mm -hmm. So could you share, what is one thing you do personally to manage stress and anxiety? You've got a big, busy job um, leading in our schools. What do you do personally to manage stress and anxiety? Well, for me, I enjoy time with my family. We have to remember that yes, we do have an extremely stressful job, but it's important to take time for yourself and take care of yourself your, you and your family's needs at all times. Um, and it's okay to put something um, to the side to take care of self. We have to make sure that we are okay to take care of ourselves in order to be a tool for other coworkers, students, and things of that nature. So I think that that's extremely important to remember to always take care of yourself. Yeah, honestly, me, I, I start off every day praying. I'm praying at my desk in the field house. I mean, I'm reading the only book that I ever want to read, and so I'm sitting there reading it and praying for the day and, and to try to put myself in position to be the person I need to be, whether it's for me or for my coworkers or for the kids. Sometimes you want to take a step back, you know, and you want to be, by, well, for me, I like to be by myself. Uh, I like to take a moment to just be, like, with myself in that moment and maybe walk around a bookstore. <laughs> I like food, so get some food. Just listen to music, do things that I love to do because I'm always surrounded by people. So just kind of taking that time and knowing that it's okay to take that time. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be Superman or Superwoman for every person all the time. You also get a break. You get to be tired too and you get to have a moment where you just kind of step back and take care of yourself. So you all are sharing ideas of how you manage your stress and anxiety, how you take care of yourself. Self-care is a big theme. And the theme has also been you have to take care of yourself so you can take care of others, mm -hmm. help others. Sure. Well, in this case, we're here to take care of our students. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what are some specific things, some tangible, actionable things you do or can do to help foster productive, meaningful relationships with students? 
I think that the students oftentimes think that we're at school particularly just for the academic piece, but at my particular <clears throat> campus, I think that we do a great job at building those relationships with students and to let them know that yes, you are my student and I do care about your well-being. Um, and once a student realizes that we are people too, um, they will go to the ends of the earth to make sure that they come and speak to you in the event that they do have a legitimate question, concern, um, something that makes them feel uneasy. Constant reaching out. I mean, we all were, I can remember a coach reaching out to me in seventh grade and saying, hey, I want you to play football. And now I'm a head football coach. And I was not, that was not my plan. And, and when you do that and you see something in them that they don't see in themselves yet, well, then they have an opportunity to do something that they didn't know that they could do. But we have to be the ones leading by example in that constant engagement and asking them about things to the point where they'll get, they'll come to us. And that, I mean, just like the bad, the good spreads like wildfire too. If you can put good in and put good out there and kids see that, that word gets around, hey, you know, you can go talk to that person even though you don't have them. And that's, that's really important for kids to know that they have more than one outlet. Also, you know, Showing your lighter side, you know, your little goofy side to your students is also good because then they, the students can see you as somebody real. I am a little goofy with my kids. Um, I like to make sure that I'm relatable to my students. Like, if you're struggling, I'd like to like, okay, well, I've, I've been there before. I've been in that situation. So knowing that you can trust somebody who's been in that situation with you. So you all have talked a great deal about establishing the relationships. You want your students to feel comfortable coming mm -hmm. to you, talking to you. We have some programs in place. You know, one of the formal programs is the program um, See Something, Say Something. I know you all are familiar with that. We encourage our students to speak up when they see something that concerns them or when they have classmates that need help. But I want to kind of close with this question because I want our students to understand, um, I keep coming back to this, that they have to be able to have the courage to speak up when they need to speak up on important issues. But I want to ask you, what are some barriers you see that keep students from speaking up when they need to? Dr. Dupree, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. With this group of students that I'm currently interacting with, students oftentimes feel that they don't want to be identified as a snitch. Nobody wants to be identified as a snitch. And I've been doing this long enough to help the students understand and teach the students that, young lady, young man, I'm not going to link you back to this particular situation. The word snitch does have a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. I just like to think of it as you being a good friend, a good mm -hmm. person. I mean, you know, if it were you, what would you, like, wouldn't you want help too? So I would say just, you know, find someone you can trust and try to help them out that way and tell someone. And you know, in, on your ID card, right behind your ID card, if you flip it, there is a talk line number where you can talk to somebody anonymously and report. Mm -hmm. um, and so that student can get help. It, it's going to take a little bit of bravery and a little bit of uncomfortableness, but you can do it. So I think that's a good way to wrap up our conversation. You know, we can, during the last few weeks, I've had so many discussions, responded to many, many emails about the topic of school safety and security. And we can talk about all the systems, the hardware, the bricks, and securing our actual buildings. But as I've heard through the conversations I've had with students and staff, the theme that keeps coming up is the way we really protect our schools is to take care of and protect each other. To build relationships, to have conversations, to share important information with each other, and sometimes with, with adults when it's important to do so, to protect or help somebody. So I invite each of you to kind of take these conversations to heart, to reflect on how they impact you and what you need to do differently or how you may need to shift your thinking and grow in this area. We're going to keep talking about school safety. We care about our students. We care about you, students. We care about our staff. We want everyone in Fort Bend ISD to be safe when they're in any Fort Bend ISD facility. If you have questions or if you have comments or additional thoughts you'd like to share, please go to our district website, to the Let's Talk page, and there's a button there that says Continuing the Conversation. We want you to ask us any question you have or share any thoughts that are on your mind because this is a conversation that affects all of us and we all need to have our voices heard. So thank you for being with us today.